A nice looking smart home dashboard is a key component of your smart home. It's how you will interact with your devices, get information, and most importantly of all, it's how you will get street cred with other smart home enthusiasts when you whip out your phone to compare who has the nicest app. But with tons of community made dashboards out there, it can be hard to know where to get started. So let's cover five incredible looking dashboards that you can get started with right now. Firstly, what do we mean when we say dashboard? Since that could be interpreted in a few different ways. In simple terms, a dashboard is the place that you will go to control all of your smart home devices or get information and just generally interact with your smart home. When we are talking about Home Assistant specifically, we are talking about Lovelace, which is the dashboard that it ships with, where you can add what's called cards to your dashboard, which control your devices and or display useful information. Now, Lovelace comes with a fairly straightforward way to add cards out of the box and the default look for Lovelace is fine, it's functional, but this is Home Assistant. And so naturally we can tweak Lovelace till our heart's content. And that is exactly what we are going to get into today. Now, just to get ahead of the inevitable comments saying, you don't need a dashboard if you're doing smart home, right? And that is somewhat true. Home automation should be just that automatic. But at some point you will have to interact with your smart home manually. And so why not have a nice dashboard to do it? The dashboards that we are about to look at allow you to completely transform the look and feel of your dashboard from stock Lovelace. Under the hood, it's still running Lovelace, but the level of customization is really insane. Now, if I'm being honest, creating Lovelace dashboards is probably my weakest skill when it comes to Home Assistant. I just don't have the creativity to come up with something beautiful, but also functional. And that's what a good dashboard should be, right? It needs to look good, without getting in the way of controlling your devices. So I thought, why not use some of my YouTuber powers for good and show some of the incredible Lovelace designs that are out there from some of the amazing designers. There are tons of dashboards out there. I just picked a handful of my favorites from Reddit or the Home Assistant community forum. We could be here all day looking at designs. So perhaps if you guys like this video, we can do a follow-up showing some more designs. But anyways, let's get into the first design which is one of you, some of you may be familiar with, Dwayne's dashboard. Dwayne's dashboard is what I would call a more beginner focused dashboard that is suitable for all screen sizes from mobile to desktop, meaning that you can have just one dashboard for all devices instead of having to create separate ones. What makes Dwayne's dashboard more beginner friendly is a few things. Firstly, it's documentation. The documentation is pretty extensive with its own dedicated website and everything you need to know included there in case you ever get stuck. Secondly, installation is pretty simple too and can be done in just a few minutes. And finally, the entire aim of Dwayne's dashboard is that it will auto generate pretty much the entire dashboard for you. So with lots of dashboards, you're required to go in and manually add all of your entities and devices into YAML files to set everything up and then tweak it to your specific needs. But Dwayne's dashboards get rid of that and auto populates the dashboard for you with only a little bit of information required to get it going. Look and feel is a very subjective thing, so bear that in mind as we go through these. But in terms of how I personally think it looks, I think it looks pretty good given how easy it is to set up and get running. And plus it also includes a light and a dark mode, which is nice. It's not the most customized view I've ever seen, but that's just a trade-off of it being beginner friendly and having everything generated for you. If you're currently using stock Lovelace dashboard, nothing wrong with that by the way, but you want to try and step up a notch and try something a bit newer, but you aren't confident editing YAML files, then Dwayne's dashboard is certainly a great place to get started. Next up, we have the dashboard that I feel is like the basis and inspiration for a lot of other dashboards that I see, and that is this dashboard by Matthias. It doesn't have a name, so I'm just going to refer to it as HomeKit Inspired. And obviously, as the name suggests, it's designed to look like what you get with Apple HomeKit for those that are a fan of that design and it's very customizable. Now, I will warn you that this dashboard is not for the faint of heart and can be quite difficult to get started with since it basically contains all of Matthias's config files and you are required to go in and then replace all of the lines and all of the entities with your own entities. And it's also a lot of YAML coding 
But once you figure it out, you get a really nice looking dashboard that has nice pop-ups and a lot of additional functionality built in. I like the way it looks personally since I'm a big dark mode fan and it works on mobile and on desktop since it makes use of the grid layout. Plus there are a ton of custom cards that you can use with it and really tweak it to your liking. This is a great dashboard, particularly for tablets and is really popular among people with wall tablets. In fact, I originally started my wall tablet out with this design before coming up with my own. If you're a more advanced user looking for a HomeKit inspired dashboard to try out, then definitely take a look at this one. Third up on our list, we have one that has actually came out fairly recently actually. And I first spotted this in the Home Assistant Facebook group and that is a design by Sam Wakes. This is the only one on this list that I haven't personally tried yet since it is pretty new, but it's something I hope to give a shot at at some point in the future. I really like the nice clean layout of this dashboard. And in particular, I'm a big fan of having selectable categories like lights or security, and then being able to select rooms within that category for a focused view on the room. Being dark mode too is also a really nice bonus. This is a similar design to the HomeKit inspired one in that it's kind of a dump of Sam's config and you kind of need to make it work for your own entities and devices. So probably for the more advanced user, but once you've done that, you will again have a really nice sleek looking dashboard. Number four is another beginner dashboard and another HomeKit-esque dashboard called HomeKit Infused. I'm using the word beginner here loosely because when it comes to custom Lovelace dashboards, there really is no true beginner Lovelace dashboard other than using stock Lovelace. But HomeKit Infused is designed to be a framework to help you build out your own custom dashboards. And it's probably the largest and all encompassing, but also best documented dashboard I've seen so far. And it obviously leans quite heavily into the HomeKit aesthetic. It's got a nice configurable header up the top with notifications, as well as a navigation bar down at the bottom, and overall just a really nice clean aesthetic. If you're looking for a dashboard that has absolutely everything you will need, along with all the documentation you will need to get started, HomeKit Infused is a great dashboard to check out. And we come to our fifth and final dashboard, which is also a fairly new kid on the block called Minimalist. And as the name suggests, it's intended to be a sleek and simple UI with everything you need and nothing you don't. This is the one I've actually implemented in my own personal setup just recently as my mobile dashboard of choice. And there are a lot of things I really like about it. Firstly, it's well documented with its own website for documentation. And secondly, it's kind of this modular approach. So they give you the basic template to get you up and running and you can go into the website and they have a selection of custom cards with images of what they look like, along with the code snippets of how to actually use them. And then you can implement them into your own dashboard. I've tried a lot of custom dashboards and for me, this was one of the quickest to get up and running and start actually developing and using. They've got a light and dark mode too, lots of custom cards with more user submitted ones being added. And it's a really nice look in my opinion. The only thing I would say is, it, is it's geared a bit more towards mobile and tablet usage at the moment, but it is fairly new and has tons of posts in the Home Assistant form with lots of users contributing their own code and designs based on this dashboard. Overall, I've been really loving playing with this one recently just for how easy it's been to use. And I also think it looks fantastic in my opinion. So there we go, that is five amazing dashboards that you can use to customize your Home Assistant experience. Now there are probably hundreds of Home Assistant dashboards and designs out there at the moment. And there is loads more that we could have talked about and featured here. So if you like this video and this format, then let me know in the comments if you want to look at some more designs in the future, and we can definitely do that. And I'll make sure to leave links to all of the designs that we looked at here today down in the description if you want to check any of them out for yourself. And of course, big props to all of the designers and developers who have been hard at work crafting these dashboards for the community to enjoy. Some absolutely fantastic work there. Anyway, so that is about going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.